Direct response copywriting is not just writing. It's the art of persuasion, the science of influence, and the key to unlocking the potential of your business. It's the unseen engine that powers S, um, successful marketing campaigns, driving conversions and, and boosting sales. It's all about crafting compelling messages that resonate with your target audience, making them want to take action immediately. Think of it as a conversation between you and your potential customer. Every word you write should serve a purpose, guiding the reader towards a single clear call to action. It's about understanding human psychology and using it to your advantage. But remember, it's not about tricking people into buying. It's about presenting your product or service in a way that highlights its benefits and how it can solve a problem or fulfill a need. Mastering this skill can significantly increase your conversions, sales, and ultimately your profits. And the first uh, tip for mastering di uh, direct response copywriting is to learn from the best. Imagine you're an aspiring musician. Would you not study the compositions of Mozart, Beethoven or the Beatles? Would you not try to understand uh, the, the, the intricate melodies, uh, uh, harmonies and rhythms that make their music timeless? The same principle applies to copywriting. If you want to write compelling copy that sells, learn from the masters. One of the most effective ways to do this is by copying by hand famous aids from great copywriters like Gary Halbert, Ben Settle and Eugene Schwartz. This may sound tedious, but it's a proven method used by many successful copywriters to understand the structural rhythm and flow of winning copy. As you write out these ads by hand, you're not just mechanically transcribing words. You're immersing yourself in the art of persuasion feeling the rhythm of the words and understanding how each sentence builds on the last to create a compelling narrative that persuades the reader to take action. Think of it as a form of active learning where you're engaging with the material in a way that's far more powerful than just reading. You're seeing how a master storyteller weaves a tale that captures attention, stirs emotion, and compels action. This isn't about plagiarizing or copying verbatim. It's, just, um, it's about understanding the, the underlying structure, the psychology, the, the art of persuasion that makes these ads so effective. It's about learning to see not just what is said, but how it's said, why it's said, and the impact it creates. This method is a deep dive into copywriting mastery. It's about learning the craft from the inside out, absorbing the wisdom of the masters, and then applying it in your own unique way. Um, remember, we're not just copying words. We're studying the art of persuasion, learning how to craft compelling narratives, and understanding how to stir emotions and compel action. This method is like a backstage pass into the minds of the greatest copywriters of all time. It's a powerful tool that can help you elevate your copywriting skills and write ads that sell. So grab a pen, find a famous ad and start copying. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn. The second tip is, is, is to always include a response uh, mechanism in your copy. This might sound technical, but it's really as simple as giving your audience a way to respond to your ad. This could be a coupon code, an email sign up, or even a simple click here for more information button. Why is this important? Well, it allows you to track the effectiveness of your advertising. It's like a virtual breadcrumb trail that your audience leaves behind, showing you exactly how they interact with your copy. Imagine you've written two different ads, each with its own response mechanism. After a week, you find one ad has generated a hundred responses, while the other has only garnered 20. 
this gives you clear actionable data on what works and what doesn't and the best part it's a continuous feedback loop you can constantly refine your copy based on real-world responses leading to better and better results over time remember if you can't measure it you can't improve it the third tip is to um, prioritize clarity over cleverness now you might be thinking but isn't clever writing more engaging here's the thing in the world of direct response copywriting it's not about showcasing your wit or crafting catchy slogans it's about clear communication you're not writing a mystery novel where you keep your reader guessing your goal is to let your audience know exactly what you're offering how it benefits them and why they should act now Overly clever writing, word plays, or slogans can often muddy the waters, creating confusion or distraction. And in this game, confusion leads to inaction. So, here's the golden rule. Write clearly. Be straightforward. Make your message as simple and digestible as possible. Remember, you're not trying to win the Pulitzer Prize. You're trying to get a response. And for that, clarity is king. The, uh, the fourth tip is to always translate features into benefits. You see, we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with features of products and services. But here's the catch. Dorothy types us, people are not interested in features. What they really care about are the benefits that these features can bring to their lives. Benefits answer the consumer's question, what's in it for me? Let's take an example. Instead of saying, our laptop has a battery life of 10 hours, translate this into a benefit like, enjoy uninterrupted work or play for 10 hours without having to recharge. Suddenly the focus shifts from the product to how the product can enhance the consumer's life. In the end, it's not about the product or its features. Uh, it's about the, the transformation that the product can bring to the consumer's life. Always remember, people don't buy products. They buy better versions of themselves. This, uh, the fifth tip is to make a big promise, but always back it up with solid proof. Uh, this is a crucial aspect of direct response copywriting that can truly make or break your campaign. Uh, you see, the world of marketing is rife with promises. Every product, every service, every brand, they're all promising something. But the ones that stand out, the ones that truly connect with their audience, they don't just make promises, they provide proof. They offer compelling evidence that substantiates their claims. So how do you go about doing this? Well, let's break it down. First, you need to make a promise that's big, bold, and compelling. It should be something that directly addresses a need or a desire of your target customer. It should be a promise that makes them sit up and take notice. But here's the catch. You can't just make a big promise and leave it at that. You have to back it up. You have to provide proof, hard evidence that your product or service can deliver on that promise. This could be in the form of testimonials, case studies, before and after photos, or any other form of evidence that reinforces your claim. Remember, the proof has to be believable and relevant. It should directly support your promise and help to build trust with your audience. Let's take an example. Suppose you're selling a weight loss supplement and your big promise is that it helps people lose 20 pounds in 30 days. Now that's a pretty big promise, but if you can back it up with real life testimonials, clinical studies, and before and after photos, then you've got yourself um, a compelling piece of copy that not only makes a big promise, but also provides solid proof. So 
To sum it up, making a big promise is important, but providing proof is essential. It's what separates effective copy from mere hype. A big promise without proof is just a tall tale. Thus, the final tip is, uh, is to let your to let your copy breathe. Yes, you heard that right. It may, may seem counterintuitive, especially when you're eager to get your message out there. But trust me, giving your copy a little breather can pay off in a big way. Imagine you're an artist. You've just finished an intricate painting. You've poured hours into it, meticulously crafting each stroke. Now you're so close to it, you can't see the whole picture. You're focused on the details but you might be missing the bigger picture. That's when you step back. You leave the studio, take a walk, maybe even sleep on it. When you return, you see your work with fresh ease. Suddenly, the areas that need improvement become glaringly obvious. The same principle applies to copywriting. After you've put in the hard work of crafting your copy, step back. Allow it to rest for a day or two, or even a week if you have the luxury of time. Resist the urge to tweak it, to reread it, to nitpick every sentence. Just let it be. When you come back to it, you'll see it from a different perspective. You'll catch the typos the awkward phrasing, the convoluted sentences that you missed in the initial rounds. You'll notice if the promise isn't big enough or if the proof isn't compelling enough, you'll be able to strengthen the response mechanism and sharpen the benefits. The beauty of this process is that it gives you a chance to refine your copy to make it the best it can possibly be. It's like polishing a diamond. The first cut might be rough, but with time and patience, you can turn it into a sparkling gem. Remember, good copywriting is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It takes time, effort, and a lot of patience, so don't rush it. Let your copy breathe and it will thank you by being the best it can be. Giving your copy uh, some breathing room can help you see it with fresh eyes and make necessary improvements.